the Father and I are one verse. Another verse that Christians often use to prove Jesus Christ's membership in the Trinity with God in the heavens is, the Father and I are one, John chapter 10, verse 30. A similar verse states, Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? John chapter 14, verse 10. Yet another similar verse states, On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. John chapter 14, verse 20. Christians constantly mistake the verse, I and the Father are one, to mean God and Jesus Christ are one being, even though this verse does not mean it in this context. To understand the correct context, one needs to read the verse before it. The passage starts from John chapter 10, verse 23, and reads, And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us doubt? If thou wilt be the Christ, tell us plainly. I already told you, Jesus replied, but you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify on my behalf, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The verses state that the Jews surrounded Jesus Christ and claimed he lacked clarity and spoke ambiguously, despite the clarity of his message. They did not like him nor his message and tried to foment issues for him. The Jews picked up stones to aim at him because they claimed he was preaching that he was God. Jesus Christ explained to the Jews that they were wrong to accuse him of this claim, as he never said he was God. Jesus replied, I told you, and you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name. My faithful followers bear witness of me as my true followers follow me, and I give them eternal life. And so on goes the rest of the passage quoted above. Christians must read the verses before and after a verse to fully understand its proper context. When reading the verses that came before I and the Father are one, one realizes that Jesus Christ means they are one in purpose and not one being. John chapter 17 verses 21 and 22 quotes Jesus Christ praying that his disciples should be one with God as Jesus Christ was that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. The same one is used here in this context as well. If Christians were consistent in their way of thinking, they would include the disciples as part of the Trinity infused into one body. Does this mean that Jesus Christ was praying that the disciples formed part of God as well? No, of course not. He meant one in agreement and that they shared a common purpose. If one believes God and Jesus Christ are one and part of a triune Godhead because of this verse, it will contradict other verses in the Bible that state God and Jesus Christ are not one in the same person. If Jesus Christ stated, the Father is greater than I, that would imply that they are not equal. How can they be one if one is greater than the other? My Father is greater than I. John chapter 14 verse 28. But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Matthew chapter 24 verse 36. The concept of the Trinity, in which God the Almighty is a union of three divine persons in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is impossible 
as Jesus Christ is a man with a body and a soul. The unity between an imperfect physical body that requires food, drink, and sleep, and God, who is perfect and does not need food, drink, and sleep, is impossible 